Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, and welcome back to my channel. Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, and I am back, back, back from Providence, Rhode Island. I went there for like four to five days to visit some friends of mine, and it was a very lovely, relaxing time away from Chicago, and will hopefully serve as like a nice, I don't know, beginning to a new chapter of my life. Uh, I uh, I just really needed some time away and it was lovely. And also I know that I, I do travel a lot and I, I don't think that there's necessarily a problem with that. Like, you know, I, I work hard to build this YouTube channel and community and things like that. And like one thing I enjoy doing is traveling and getting to see friends and things like that. And so I, I, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing, but I do think I've traveled a lot lately and that is also difficult to build a successful YouTube channel that is built around like, you know, being current with some of the stuff being covered. Um, so I say all of that to say, thank you so much for your patience. I really appreciate it. I appreciate that even when I miss out on crazy news happening with Amber Lynn and or other girly pops on the internet that uh, y'all still end up coming back and watching whenever I'm able to cover it. So thank you so much. I appreciate you all. Uh, I always, also like to reiterate that in case I haven't in a while, but uh, I'm very grateful for what y'all have afforded me. And that includes being able to like take time away to travel to see friends and uh, get out of outside of Chicago when my life here in Chicago was kind of crazy, <laughs> kind of crazy. So uh, thank you so much for affording me that opportunity. I really appreciate it and thanks for coming back and thanks for being here for the tea today. I am going to leave some timestamps of different things. So we're gonna do a brief cover of some stuff that was covered on Oh Lordy It's Jordy's live streams because it really impacts some of Amber Lynn's content that we're gonna watch today. And then while I was away, Amber Lynn also posted two videos, one called Addressing Everything that's 23 minutes long and I believe it was a video that was made surrounding um, some Instagram Q&A thing she put up where she was like, I wanna address all the problems or all, all your assumptions about me or whatever. I don't know, she doesn't talk like that and I don't either, so I don't know why I made that voice. But she made an Instagram little post about like, I'm gonna address all of your assumptions about me. So I think that's what that's about. And then the second video is called Tommy Rumors, which is, I believe her addressing some of the stuff that Oh Lordy It's Shorty has come out with on his live streams. I haven't watched either of those videos yet, uh, but I have seen some chatter on both Twitter and also from people in my Twitch community. So that's why I generally feel like I know what those things are probably going to be about, but we'll get into that, of course, when we do the actual reaction. So to get started, it's important that we talk about what Oh Lordy It's Shorty covered in his live streams. I'm going to leave two of his live streams linked down below, and then also a video that I watched to help get caught up on some of the stuff from Salty Crab. To be quite honest, I just needed a recap video if I wanted to, like, be able to post any of this anytime soon. So thank you so much to Salty Crab for, for doing that work to uh, go over all of the screenshots and DMs and things like that that Jordy shared in his live stream but in a more condensed version. And of course, like, feel free to go straight to the source to see all of it for yourself if you're not up to date with what's going on in Amberlynn's life right now. So Jordy did a live stream where he went over some DMs that he shared back and forth with a person that he found through TikTok. I think this person probably commented on maybe like an Amberlynn Reed related TikTok, maybe a TikTok from Amberlynn herself where she was sharing uh, Tommy or something like that. I don't know the specifics of that, but I think that's how Jordy found this person. And Jordy DM'd back and forth with this person. And I will say, and I think that's fair that people have um, some questions about like, where's the receipts? Where are the proof that this is something that, that actually happened or that this person is actually who they say they are? And from watching brief snippets of, of things, it does sound like Jordy in some way on his own maybe tried to verify that this person was who they said they were, but also like did not share those things 
with his audience in order to, you know, protect the privacy of this person. So, uh, I think a lot of people reasonably were like, I don't know, we're probably going to need to see some more proof that this person is who they say they are. Although they did have a lot of details in their messages. It sounded like they weren't just, like, making stuff up. That's my opinion, having read through the DMs and things like that. But also, like, just note that, you know, we don't know for sure. Outside of, outside of, I think Amber Lynn does kind of, like, indirectly confirm this in her video where she response to some of these things, so keep that in mind as well. Anyways, through these conversations that, that Jordy has with this person, uh, they don't have a name, so it's kind of maybe going to be a little bit confusing or hard to follow, but this person claims that their now ex-wife had a relationship with Tommy, and Tommy was a homewrecker, meaning Tommy broke up their marriage and started dating this person who was their ex-wife. So the person Jordy is talking to was married to a woman who had some kind of extramarital affair with Tommy and it ended their marriage. So this person didn't have a relationship with Tommy, but knew of Tommy, went to like maybe middle school and high school with Tommy, things like that. The person Jordy talked to also seemingly worked with Tommy in some kind of way at like the the hospital that Tommy is some kind of psych nurse at. And basically the the long story short when it comes to what this person shared about Tommy is that Tommy had uh, some like feeder behavior with this person's ex-wife. This person said that Tommy liked to be suffocated by people's bellies and things like that. And that Tommy also really tried to uh, make this person's ex-wife eat a lot and order them things that they probably didn't or shouldn't eat because this person was a diabetic. And there's also a bit about how Tommy made this person sleep in the basement and also maybe made this person like walk around the house naked or something like that. Just some like really concerning behaviors that are entirely believable based on other things that we know about Tommy that we seen at this point with proof. Um, you know, we have seen pictures of Tommy being, like, suffocated by their now late partner's belly. Like, we've seen pictures of that on the internet. I haven't shown them on my channel, but I promise you they exist. I've seen them. Probably a lot of you have seen them. Uh, this is, this is how we know that Tommy has engaged in, like, feeder content in the past because those photos were on a very popular feeder website. Jordy did one other follow-up stream too because I guess some people had been asking some follow-up questions so he asked her some follow-up questions um, and one thing that came out of that stream that is seemingly also important is that I guess whenever Tommy and this ex-wife's relationship ended and imploded there was some kind of legal police situation type of deal where uh, the the TikTok DM girlie's ex-wife locked Tommy in a garage. And so there does seem to be some level of evidence that Jordy showed of like actual like cases and charges being pressed against that person for like false imprisonment. So in general, obviously that's all very complicated and there's also like way more to the story than that. But I think that that is probably like the gist of of what we need to know in terms of going into these Amber Lynn videos and these reactions. Certainly if Amber Lynn references something else that comes up and I didn't cover it here, I'll just like come back to it when we're doing the actual reaction. But all of this I think really just reinforces, you know, the level of, of concern for what Emily is into, why Emily does this with like several partners. It's a, I think, a, a pattern of behavior for for Tommy. Just real quick, I apologize for switching between Emily and Tommy throughout this video. I think it's because the DMs that Jordy showed, the person talked about her by her actual name, which is Emily, but she does prefer to be called Tommy on the internet, and that's what Amber Lynn usually refers to her as. That's usually how I referred to her, but I think I just was like 
thinking about the DMs. And so I went back and forth a few different times in this video. And I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm absolutely positive that Amber Lynn will probably like explain it away and things like that. I guess one other part that this person from TikTok that was talking to Jordy mentioned is that because Tommy is a psych nurse, she does, you know, play with people's emotions. Uh, she has a good understanding of like triggers and ways to trigger people and things like that. So it sounds like there's potentially lots of layers of like manipulation that could be happening with Tommy. And I could see that being the case in her relationship with Amber Lynn as well. Like I, I think that there's probably a lot more to this story of what's going on with Amber Lynn while she's been essentially living in Wisconsin. I mean, at this point, I, I don't know if she's still claiming that she's on vacation there or not. Uh, like, wouldn't it be funny if I just went to Rhode Island and like never came back to Chicago? But anyways, I, I you know, I think, I think there's probably a lot more going on to a lot of the things that Amberlynn has been talking about in terms of her own mental health, in terms of like her and Tommy not drinking anymore. I don't know, like based on, based on all the things we know about Tommy, it just feels like there's probably probably more to the story. But anyways, I don't really have much more in terms of recapping what Jordy covered. So please, like, if you want more to the story, go either watch his live streams or again, I'll link Salty Crab's like recap of it down below. But we should just get into this reaction business because like I said, the first one is 23 minutes long and it's called Addressing everything. And again, I just want to clarify that this is probably, she posted this around the time that Jordy did his live stream, but this is probably not going to address anything in Jordy's live stream because she had already been putting up this like Instagram story. Tell me all your assumptions about me. I want to clear anything up. Nothing is off limits, which in my opinion, honestly, is just like an opportunity to like make herself the victim. It's an opportunity for her to engage in the negativity. I don't, understand why that's like always her go-to for making content. Not that she's never allowed to address like rumors about herself or like to clear things up or things like that. But for somebody who says that they're in a bad mental health space and that was the reason that they couldn't come on YouTube for nearly a month or however long it was that she took a break. Like it does seem weird to me that she would want to make a whole video that is basically going to confront the negativity that happens on her YouTube channel. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, let's just get to get to, shall we? Hello, hello. Hi. Hi. Video. Hey, girly. So in this video, we're going to do like assumptions about me. Uh, I have done a video like this before. I've done quite a few. I, um, I was going to say, girl, it's a, bef just once, you've done it a lot. You, this is something you often uh, revert to. You, you do frequently revert back to it. Another reason I think it's just interesting is because it's less like sometimes, I, I think this will come up for both of these videos that we're going to watch, but sometimes she brings attention to the rumors or the assumptions and things like that. Like, I'm curious how she's even going to, you know, like uh, bring up the stuff about the Tommy rumors without just like fully bringing more attention to it. Like the the reality is, is that of her 241,000 subscribers, chances are some of them don't even know who Jordy is. Just like a lot of them probably don't know who I am. And so like every time she like brings these things up, it just brings attention to them as well. But uh, anyway, sorry, let me, let me, I, it's only been 11 seconds. I'm, I'm getting back into the swing of reactions. Let me give her more time to talk. Um, this was a popular thing that like youtubers did years ago but like uh, sometimes i like to bring back the old stuff you know what uh, i'm saying uh -huh. so that's sure. what this video is i went on to instagram and i was like y'all send me assumptions like what do you assume about me mm -hmm. i need to know so let me either clarify deny or admit so okay let's, let's get into go it. you currently have cellulitis and that is why you are not filming no, that is not true. I haven't had cellulitis for months, thankfully. Thank I told you guys God. that I originally stopped filming because I just wanted a break. <coughs> I just had time with Tommy. Plus this time of year, I always get in this weird, like depressive state and I do come out of it. So that's like the thing where it's like, I was holding on to that. I was like, I'm gonna come out of it. 
I want to enjoy my time with Tommy. I also just like don't want to film. There's just been like a lot that's been going on within like my life and within YouTube. And I'm like, I just don't want to film. I'm so happy. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, she did already. I one one part of like her addressing this particular rumor. Also, by the way, I have like the weakest, most annoying cough still. So like, I'm probably gonna have a cough drop, and you're just you're just gonna embrace it, okay? Just deal with it. But what was I gonna say about that? Oh, like she already addressed why she hasn't been on YouTube. Like, why are we repeating this? We know. You're depressed, you refuse to go to therapy, you have the concept of a therapist, but you haven't actually called them. We get it, we got it. On to the next, please. Happy in my relationship. I realized how like so much of YouTube like literally made me unhappy. Literally? But coming from like the high and the high. I don't know that I've ever heard her say literally like that. She said literally. Happiness and just like, wow, just like feeling light and free in my normal everyday life and then all of a sudden like every time i go on youtube there's just new rumors and there's this and there's that happening and i'm harassed and every time i go into youtube there's more rumors and that's why today i'm making a video <laughs> entirely dedicated to rumors about me but that's why i stayed off the internet for the past month and a half or however long it was it's just a lot normally when something or someone is in your life and it doesn't give you anything good in your life. Uh -huh. It makes you unhappy. Usually you get rid of that. And Work. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Like, YouTube has not been making me happy. All right, then get a job. <laughs> get a job.com challenge. Try that. <laughs> Try that. Like we could talk more about that because one of the assumptions is YouTube related. And so I don't want to, like, get into, like, full detail right now. But it's just, okay. like, the subject of YouTube is really heavy for me lately. Mm. And it doesn't make me feel good. So it was easier for me to just be, like, this doesn't suit me right now. Uh -huh. This isn't suiting my happiness that I'm sure. experiencing. So I don't want it in my life anymore. Okay. So it's very easy for me to be, like, all right, I'm going to take a break and take a step back. Next assumption is Tommy is only allowing you to film in that one spot in her house, which is... I mean, it does kind of feel that way. I, I will say, previously, she did film some other parts of Tommy's house, but this is really, honestly, truly, it's giving a little bit of the Feline era, where she she literally only filmed from her couch almost all of the time. And it's also a little bit, I think it's just because of the color of the wall and everything. It's really giving back to when she would, like, film at the dining room table when she lived with Beck, Eric, and Ricky. Right here, as you guys can see, no, she gave me the freedom to film literally anywhere. Literally. Why does she keep saying, has she always said it literally? Then to do it here, this is actually the dining room. This is perfect because my tripod sits perfect. on the table. I have a chair to sit on. In my opinion, it's really good lighting. Since I haven't been vlogging, hmm. I have- Really good lighting. Sure. <laughs> sure. Sure. All right, sure, yeah. I've not found a reason to film anywhere else in the house, but she said, I could film anywhere. Next assumption is you tend to assume that most people are against you. I have my moments where I'm like, everyone loves me, I'm great. And then I have my moments where I'm like, everyone is against me and I'm fully hated. But there is mm. a gray area. I do know that there are a large amount of people who do support me and like me and love me. Uh -huh. Just like as a person or as a YouTuber, well, whatever it may be. It's, it's not even just a gray area. I mean, I, I don't think anybody is like universally liked or hated by everybody. You know? Like, I mean, like, I think most people, most people have a little bit of both. And then I do know that there is a portion of people who really, really strongly dislike me. So I'm able to see the gray area, but sometimes it's hard for me to find. X assumption, you blame everyone else for your obesity. No, like I am fully aware that my size is ultimately my fault. Mm. And yes, there are things that caused me to be this size, but it's like my fault that I haven't gotten those things fixed. Like that's in my hands. Yeah. Like, yes, being fat isn't like, oh my God, I chose to be this way. No, I did choose or unchoose or not choose to actually get help for the reasons why I'm fat, if that makes sense. I did choose or not choose or unchoose. What the fuck does it mean to unchoose? Like what? <laughs> what words are coming? 
coming out of your mouth right now. But in general, yeah, I, I think she's like, I don't know, she, she tries to blame all kinds of things. I think what she's missing is like, she can have these like self-awareness moments where she's like, yeah, the only person who got me fat was me. But I think what she's missing or why people might assume that she feels otherwise is because, you know, like she she's always quick to blame something else for for the things. I don't know that she necessarily blames other people a lot, although I think sometimes she has like talked about her childhood experience and things like that as reasons why she has a lot of mental health problems, which I think she checks out. But in general, she she like often blames other things instead of herself for why certain things don't work for her. Like, I think most recently we can think about that in terms of like Ozempic or, or semaglutide, which is what she was taking, like the generic off-brand version. When she was like, oh my God, it just stopped working. And it's like, no, you just stop trying to make it work, girl. Like, it, it probably was not specifically the medicine. You were just, you stopped trying to make it work and then you looked for an excuse to stop doing it. So I do think sometimes she blames other things, but ultimately, yes, it is, it is her fault. Makes sense. It's no one else's fault. Something that my mom actually, for uh, Miss the of my life, she struggled with was blaming herself for my weight and... I'm fully also aware of the fact of why she does that, like why she blames herself because- I don't, I'm not prepared to talk about Mama Lynn right now. I'm not prepared to talk to you about her in this moment. I'm kind of sad that she foreseeably is like done having a, a presence on your channel. Like I think a lot of us really liked Mama Lynn and I'm sad that she's just like chilling in Oklahoma so far away from, from Amber Lynn now and we probably won't get to see her in any videos anymore. I had a really bad childhood and I turned to food as comfort. My mom blames herself and I'm just constantly like, mom, this is not your fault. It's okay. So I have to like kind of talk her down from that thought. Yeah. yeah, what I choose to eat is what I choose to eat. What I choose yeah. not to eat is what I choose not to eat. My weight will never be anyone else's fault but my own. <laughs> Next assumption is you're engaged. No, I'm not. Next, you subconsciously Good are to attracted to men. No, I am not attracted to men. But there are guys where you can look at them and just know, like, oh, that's what I, I do get so irritated. People, people are, ugh, like, the, the, like, I don't even, I don't know that I want to call it homophobia. <laughs> I don't know what I would call it. But there is something insidious about people trying to insist that Amber Lynn is attracted to men that is just so irritating, considering throughout our time of watching her on YouTube, she has always been in some kind kind of like queer lesbian relationship. Uh, specifically, maybe the only exception is that uh, she was in a relationship with one trans man, uh, but he also like came out as trans, I think after the relationship, right? So like this like insidious, like need for her to not actually be a lesbian is really weird to me. Like it doesn't make sense to me. And maybe, maybe it is homophobia. I don't know. Like, I don't know that I want to call it that, but there's something just always feels like icky and off to me because like literally Amberlynn has always been down with women and it just comes into this thing of like, people think that like, because she's so fat, all she could get is like a woman or something like that. And that she resigns herself to only being able to date women, which is just like gross. Like a, what a weird thing to say as if like, all lesbians are just settling in some kind of way for women. I don't know, it's it's very weird to me. I've never understood it. It doesn't make any sense to me. Attractive guy. In the same way of like, a gay man can look at a girl and be like, oh, that's sure. an attractive girl. Or sure. like, a straight female can look at another straight female and be like, oh, that's an attractive sure. female. Like, sure, sure, there's sure, a sure. spectrum. Like, mm -hmm. there is a difference between being attracted to someone, yeah. but knowing that someone is attractive. Even as a lesbian, sure. I can look at another woman and be like, oh, she's really pretty, but that doesn't mean that I'm attracted to her. I'm fully lesbian, so that's Fully that. lesbian. You weigh over 600 pounds at one point and don't want to admit it. I have never seen 600 pounds on the scale. You guys know. We that, that, is a, that is a shift though in the way she talks about it, because recently in a video, like within the past few months, she actually said like, you know what? I do kind of worry that at some point I was over 600 pounds and I just didn't know because I didn't weigh myself. So uh, that is a shift because prior to that, she's always insisted she's never been 600 pounds. So like even the language of her saying now, like, well, I've never seen 600 pounds on a scale is a little bit different. I'll say it together. My highest weight was 572.4. And that's like my lowest highest weight. 
that I like <laughs> physically saw myself. But I'm telling you, I go back and look at older videos, My and weight. I looked so much bigger than I do now. Like I'm fully aware that I am really, really large and in charge, but that was weird. I'm fully aware that I am very big, but like I used to be bigger and that's obvious. And I look back at that and I'm like, whoa, like I had to have been bigger. It just, I don't know. It's not making sense. I've always been honest about my weight. So if I was ever bigger than five, I just, I just, I just know, listen, I stopped like paying attention to every single one of her, her weigh-ins and remembering t with detail what she says she's weighed. But I just know people are like, you have not always been honest about your weight. Before and I knew it, you guys would know too. Next assumption is your body hurts all of the time. Honestly, no. And I think it's just because like, I'm used to the uncomfortability, if that's a word, of my size because the it's like my normal baseline. But I will say because Tommy she, has- She really has a fucking way with words today in this video. I love it. I'm obsessed. Lots of stairs in her home and I'd be using them daily. I am up and down them stairs easily at least 15 times a day because it's like she has multiple floors uh -huh. and everything is on a different girl you better you better stay away from the basement <laughs> you better stay away from the basement girly pop floor so my knees i'm not gonna lie have been hurting so bad and it's just because it's like my body is not used to stairs oh. i have not had to use stairs like mm -hmm. that daily multiple multiple times a day I don't think ever in my life. When I lived in Virginia, I had to. I was just also thinking about, not even Virginia, but there was a video she did when she was living with Destiny where she was purposely trolling going up and down stairs. She really did, it was a, a video, I can't even remember what it was called, but she has cited it in the past as one of the times that she was purposely trolling, where she was like clickbaiting her, her size and her weight and it was, I feel like it was titled something like Fat Girl Struggles to Go Up the Stairs or something like that. That was like eight years ago and I was a lot smaller then, a lot younger then, a lot more stamina was there. My knee muscles, they be hurting, I'm not gonna lie. Okay. Like, it, some days I'm like, oh my God, it hurts to just stand. But I think I just have to build on those muscles and build that's on okay. Them, um, that's mainly the pain that I've been feeling. But I think there is like an uncomfortability that I this, have. This word uncomfortability, is that is that a word? Let me just, let me just Google. Uncomfortability. Oh, it, it is, well, is it? Well, I don't know, the AI overview uh, on Google, which like, I wish you could search things on Google without it automatically popping up a, a, a whatchamacallit. <laughs> Uh, uh, an AI overview, that's the word I'm looking for. Here's a Reddit post. Uncomfortability, word slash not a word. Is it a word found in the dictionary? No. Do we all understand what it means? Yes. Well, there you go. I don't know. I just think it's funny that she's struggling to say it and keeps using it. To my body that I am just used to, that I can tell goes away when I lose large chunks of, chunks of weight large chunks of weight. Does that make sense? I can tell there's a certain uncomfortability that does go away when I lose a large chunk of weight because I, I wish I wish she would just say discomfort. <laughs> I wish she'd just say discomfort. It'd be so much easier. It's only two syllables. And then when I feel it, I'm like, whoa, I didn't even realize like that was an issue or that was a problem or that was uncomfortable at the time because you get so used to it. It's like a baseline type of thing. You're a pillow princess. I actually am definitely a switch. I've she she loves to talk about how she loves giving and receiving. She's a she's a giver and a receiver. She loves to she loves to be ne <laughs> neck deep, finger deep. She loves being fingerlin. I love to give just as much as I love to receive. But if I had to choose, if someone literally was like, you have to choose for uh -huh. the rest of your life, I would be a giver. So no, not a pillow princess. Not you a pillow you princess. Than you actually are. Yes. Sometimes. I think I really do struggle with body image problems, obviously, like body dysmorphia. I don't realize how big I am until like I see a certain angle of like a photo taken of me or a video taken of me and I see it and I'm like, whoa. Like, cause I don't realize it like at all. Like I'm sitting here and I only see like parts of my body. I never uh -huh. really see myself in certain sort of like everyday angles unless someone's like taking a picture or a video or something and I don't mind that but it doesn't take away the fact that I literally am like 
jaw to the floor. When I, I mean, I do, I do, I think that's probably a relatable feeling for a lot of people that like the way they view themselves is not how they always see themselves and like photos and things like that. I mean, I've, I've experienced that and I, not that I'm like have any kind of body dysmorphia, but I think it's normal and it's probably even more uh, common for folks who have weight related issues and things like that. And I know she's also talked a lot in the past about how like when she sees these like photos and stuff of herself, like I think one of the biggest examples of this is when she saw the photos from the the person who was like taking pictures of her at the laundromat or whatever. I think uh, I remember her talking about this then is that like she knows she's big, but then when she sees herself from certain angles and stuff like that, that it's jarring for her. And I don't know, also probably part of that is just like, she films herself from certain angles on purpose and things like that. And so like she knows like what she looks like in her vision and she has to look at herself a lot when she's putting these YouTube videos together and stuff like that. Like I know for me personally, like seeing myself outside of this little camera space right here is sometimes really jarring too because I'm so used to looking at myself. So I think those things are relatable. I see how big I am. Um, I definitely have some sort of like body dysmorphia when it comes to that. And I've been very open about that over the years because I've always struggled with truly not realizing how big I am. I think I think that is also what's interesting though, is that like, why are we, why you ha she really has been open about that. She's talked about that before. And so it's just like, why are we answering these assumptions about things that you've talked about before? But I guess not everybody has seen every single Amberlynn video like I have, so, so maybe. Maybe she's doing it for those people. This isn't for me necessarily, I guess. And it's, yeah, it's it's frustrating because it's like if I process like in my brain how big I was, I think maybe it would be easier for me to like stick to a diet and actually huh. stick to a weight loss Interesting. plan. But body dysmorphia is one of those things where it's like your brain absolutely plays tricks on you. And I also think a big thing is like I've been big my whole life, my whole life I have always been big. I also think though that like if we're really going to talk about body dysmorphia that this is similar to the the BPD, the little BPD and that like these are things that you could like work on with a therapist that would probably be really beneficial to you overall. 11, I was 290. I reached 420 at the age of 16. Like I've always been massive. So it's like what I'm used to. It's I've always looked in the mirror and seen my body like I don't like what I see by no means, but I'm used to it. So maybe it's like, I'm almost like blind to it in a way. You're having problems with your mom. No, not at all. Again, it's just like the rumors are crazy. A lot of people think my, me and my mom aren't speaking. My mom's mad at me. She already did a whole entire ass video about this. She really already did a whole entire ass video. Like why, why are we going over this again? No. No, 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 nothing like that. Like me and my mom. I mean, it's just like, it's just like a matter of like, especially this topic in particular, she's only posted like five videos after in the past, like two months. Right. So, and that was one of them. So it's just like, if you keep up with Amberlynn in any kind of way, and this was a rumor that you thought was true and accurate, then realistically you were probably watching or keeping up with her at the time. So like, why, why don't we know this? Why are we, why are we doing all this? I don't know all the time. I do miss my mom and I know she misses me and we make sure to tell each other all the time, but like there is nothing going on with me and my mom. Like those rumors completely false. Next assumption is you feel like you can't win with the haters. Yes, their mind is made up and there is no change in it. <laughs> even with proof, I, sometimes even with receipts, there is no changing the mind of a hater. You're I think I think that's true in, in some cases. I think that there have been a couple of situations where like there, she has provided Provided evidence and people still believe whatever they want to believe. But I don't think everybody's like that, to be to be clear. One of the many women who had BPD misdiagnosed as bipolar. Yes. Next assumption is you lack discipline. I do. Next assumption is you bail through your role. Is that really an assumption? I think we, we have proof that Miss Ma'am lacks discipline. That's not really an assumption. That, that There's evidence. Just appointment. No, I did not. Wait, oh wait, oh wait. I need to hear about the urologist appointment because she was supposed to go to one in November at some point. Next assumption is you bailed your urologist appointment. No, I did not. When I did have that appointment and when all of that kidney stuff was happening, since it's a unobstructing or non-obstructing uh, 
kidney stone means it's not traveling. It's like in my kidney and it's chilling. So they said that if I stopped having symptoms completely for no. weeks, no. there's no reason to go to a urologist. D- dumb as hell. D- dumb as fucking hell. Why would you cancel that appointment? Why would you cancel that appointment? Why would you not just, like, you waited so long, why would you not, even if you weren't having symptoms, this is obviously something that keeps coming up for you. It keeps being an issue for you. Why would you not go to that fucking appointment? I swear to God, she's trying, she, I know why she didn't go to the appointment. It's because she's in Wisconsin. It's because she's in Wisconsin and she can't physically go all the way back to Oklahoma for it. I know that's the reason. This is just some bullshit <laughs> way that she is, she is trying to make it make sense for herself. That is dumb. There was nothing they could really do about it because a lot of people, have non-obstructing kidney stones and they don't even know it. And I haven't had symptoms in easily two months plus. But I know once you do have them again, you will be crying about not being able to fit into a CT scan again. And trust that. Know that. Because it will happen again. Because this is an ongoing fucking issue for you. Which is maybe why you should have gone to the appointment anyways. You'll never be able to go to a Billie Eilish concert because of your size. Um, not a thing. You've had a threesome before. I haven't, no. I mean, one time when I was 15, this guy and his cousin, there uh, there was some things, um, but I was 15, so we'll just like move on from that, but we're gonna erase that from my memory. But since then, no. I assume people blow everything out of proportion when it comes to you. Oh, yes. Absolutely everything. I, 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 oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, first of all, that's not an assumption about you. That's an assumption about other people. And also, not everybody blows everything out of a proportion. And sometimes things are appropriately put into proportion that they need to be for your ridiculous behavior on the internet. Going out of proportion. Yes. Anything bad. Anything that makes me look bad. Yes. You have a sweet tooth. Oh, yes. You've been doing a lot of Also, things. is that, again, is that an assumption or just, like, things that are based in facts and evidence that we've seen on her channel? And or she said that herself. Reflecting lately. Yes, I am definitely a reflector, so I have been doing that. Doing all. I'm not going to... Doing, doing lots of reflecting and doing nothing with it. <laughs> doing nothing to change her life as a result. Time soon. Her hernia never went away. No. But they said it's nothing for me to worry about right now. Again... I'm just suffering with things that actually a lot of people suffer with. Even even skinny people get hernias. Even skinny people have unobstructed kidney stones, you know? These are just normal things that everybody deals with. And it's not one of those things that needs to be fixed at the moment, so still there and still chilling. Next assumption is you're quick to forgive people. Yes. The way the way that she's so nonchalant. It's also just, I guess, like, it's the nonchalantness of, of, like, her having now talked about multiple health issues that she's like, it's fine. It's not bothering me right now. It's like, girl, this on top of all of the other health-related things that you've ever talked about having a problem with, and you just have no concern, no worries. Anyways, let's hear her talk about, I don't know, what did she say, being a forgiving person? I forgive and forgive and forgive. That's just, like, what I've done in my life. And a lot of people always ask, like, in Berlin, the reaction channels are, like, horrible towards you. Like, why do you try to message them and be friendly? Like, I remember, what was it? Zachary Michael was going through something like with his health and I messaged him. I like related to him and I was like, I know it feels like it's scary to have. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yep. 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 Uh huh. She, she did message me. And by the way, this was, if I remember correctly. So she messaged me. It was back when I was having, I was having some heart related health issues uh, I have a history of, like, heart disease and stuff in my family, so it was, like, a lot going on, I was having some chest pains, things like that, and she did message me, but mind you, let me just go, let me just go fucking look, because why is she bringing this up right now? What is her name even on? <laughs> is it Hectic Ambie still on the, on the Instagram? Because she did message me. 
But I need you to know, if you, we really want to talk about why I didn't take this seriously, this all came, she sent me this message after she relentlessly in my DMs was telling me that I was an awful person for doxing her weight loss surgeon, which y'all know I never did. I never doxed her weight loss surgeon. Y'all never heard me say, you all never heard me come onto this YouTube channel and say, Amberlynn Reed's weight loss surgeon is Dr. Smith from the 1000 Pound Sisters. I didn't confirm any of that until after the fact. And she sent me some just real nasty messages about that, okay? Real fun fucking nasty messages. And so I ended that conversation asking her to stop DMing me, to stop messaging me. And so yeah, when she messaged me actually about a year ago, November 5th, 2023, and said, I hope you start feeling better. Pain like that is the worst, especially when you aren't 100% sure what's wrong. You'll be in my thoughts. I did say in a video that she reached out to me and it felt manipulative because how is the last time we were talking in DMs is you getting mad at me for doxing you even though I didn't and you telling me I'm awful and I'm a terrible person and this, that, the other? Why, why should I have to take that seriously? Why should I? Because that's manipulative. You, you were coming into my DMs to try and manipulate me into feeling some type of way about you. That's why I don't fuck with you in the DMs anymore. That's why we don't DM. That's why I won't accept a DM from you moving forward because I don't care about you in that way. I don't want to know you in that way. I want to sit here and watch your stupid videos. I want to sit here and watch you answer the same 12 assumptions about you that you've already answered in 12 other videos, and I don't wanna DM with you. I don't give a shit if you are trying to reach out and be nice and play pretend. Like, I'm not doing that with you. I'm sure not. I'm surely not. Oh, God. I have, like, health issues happen, and, like, you don't know what's wrong, and I just know it's scary, and I felt empathy, and I felt sympathy towards him for that, because I relate, and it's scary. And I could sense, and see, and feel in his video when he was talking about it, like he was worried. So the person that I am, uh -huh. like I felt compelled to message him. I never mentioned publicly that I did that. I don't mention publicly when I message anyone. anyone. I, I have also, by the way, mentioned that. I mentioned that in a video probably around the time that it happened and I talked about how I felt it was manipulative then. Because let me, let me just, let me just pull an excerpt. <laughs> let me just pull an excerpt from Miss Ma'am about some things that she was saying to me, okay? Like, let me just give you a sense of some of the stuff she had to say. Okay, now that's fucking shitty, Zach. We had a personal discussion on why I don't uh, want people knowing who my surgeon is. I told you about me almost getting evicted because of haters, etc. The fact that you know that these doxes are actively ruining my life in private, you still have the audacity to mention in your new video that I'm lying about where my surgeon is located. It's gross. You're no different than the people actually contacting my surgeon and ruining things for me. You have no idea what's going on in my life right now and the things I'm having to hide and deal with in private because people ruin my surgery for me. Shit I can't speak on, but you have an idea idea of what I'm going through because I told you personally and that's not even the tip of the iceberg you're sick you're part of the problem and I will take this seriously that was her quoting me as what you said in response up there you're not taking it seriously you're alluding that these people are right that I am in fact seeing Dr. Smith I never said that in a video I she literally was like she was lying about traveling out of state to go see a weight loss surgeon and she didn't actually do that and you could tell in her video like had I not even known that Dr. Smith was her surgeon you could tell because she left that morning and she came back that fucking day she didn't have to travel out of state to do nothing she you know what you're doing and it's all for a paycheck. It's wrong. <laughs> it's wrong. Just really fucking bananas. She's just, she's just crazy. She's just manipulative. Like, she's coming into my DMs being nasty to me. Oh, and then I also forgot, because now I'm looking through here again, and she also, the there was one other interaction we had between her wishing me well, her wishing me well uh, for my, my health issues I was having, and it was the time that she fully straight up lied about me in our Instagram stories, saying that that Life Plus Cindy blamed me for the hate that she was getting when that's in fact not what happened. She's just absurd. And then and then that was the thing. That's really now that I'm really going back through these messages, that's really also the reason that I didn't um 
take her her message of concern seriously because when I called her out on Instagram for her lying about the Life Plus Cindy situation, she blocked me and then she watched my video about my health problems and unblocked me so that she could come and say this to me. So she could come and be like, oh, I'm so sorry to hear about your health problems. I hope you're okay. Like, this is, this is what I'm talking about. This is why I don't fuck with her in the DMs. You wouldn't believe some of the YouTubers I have spoken to who have even messaged me first. But I don't sit here and be like, yeah, this person messaged me and I messaged this person and we speak. Like, I don't do that, but reaction okay. channels love to like, when I message them, oh, they say something. Well, I have to say something because otherwise you'll hold on to it and then you'll come out and, and say like, oh, did you see how Zach didn't tell you all that my, my weight loss surgeon was Dr. Smith, even though he was doing what I asked him to do and not telling you that, not doxing information about me. Like, that's why I have to come out and tell people that you messaged me because you try to manipulate it. Oh my God, we're not even, how, this is gonna be a long ass video because I've been filming for 50 minutes and we're like barely halfway through this first video. <sighs> Akri Michael mentioned that I messaged him. Yeah. And people came to me, opinions are so back and forth. Like there's like a chunk of people who were like, ew, Emmeline, that is so gross. Like don't message him. Like he wants nothing to do with you. Like, Ugh. but then there's like another chunk of people who were like, why do you message him? Like he has done wrong. Like. He has a whole channel just like making fun of you. Da, da, da. Well, that's not my whole channel, but, and, and I also don't know that I make fun of you. I don't know that that, well, I don't, I would say I don't really make fun of you, at least in comparison to what other people are doing. Like, I like to laugh and joke about the silly, funny things you do on your channel. I just don't, after a while, um, Someone doesn't even have to apologize to me. I'll accept an, an apology that wasn't even given. I'm not, I'm not well, saying, listen, I'm not apologizing to you for anything. <laughs> Just so we're clear, you're getting no apologies from me. There's not an apology to accept because I'm not apologizing. I'm not apologizing to you. You don't, there's no apology to accept here, Amberlynn. He needs to apologize to me. That's not what I'm trying to say, but I'm just trying to like give an example and show the gravity of like, People can like say bad things about me all day long. And for some reason, oh, you're such a saint. I still have like this part of me that like cares and is always. Oh, you're such up a good person. For a forgiveness moment. Like, you're such a good person, know. Amber. This Lynn. is more about me, really, that I just kind of let people walk all over me. I don't know. I've always had that like you're, issue. You're such a good person. You're such a victim. I can't believe people walk all over you, Amberlyn. Give me a fucking break. Type thing where. I don't want to like have things just like be negative and prolonged. Like if I get in an argument with someone, like say a friend or whatever, maybe a partner, friends. a family member, it doesn't matter. Like I don't like arguments that last forever. Like if an argument's arising, like let's let's fix it right then and there. Like let's fix it, say our apologies, and like move on. I'm very much that person. Like I really am. Like all right, well let's this type of girl. Let's move on now. People don't want to view me as that person, but that's literally me. Twinkie is with Mama Lynn. No, Twinkie is without a doubt here. And a lot of you are like, how come you're not like vlogging her? Cause I'm not vlogging. <laughs> like I'm literally not vlogging. All I'm showing is like me chilling. I yeah, I just, I, I need people to get over Twinkie not being there. I, I don't, I don't know why people think that or feel that, but like just because Twinkie is not in a video doesn't mean she's not there. Poe is sitting right behind me right now, but he's not in the video, but he is here. He is in fact here. I just, I, I, that's just a, a thing from my end because people make all kinds of assumptions about my dogs or have about my dogs over the, the time that I've had them and had this YouTube channel. But yeah, Poe is here. <laughs> he is here. I'm sure Twinkie is there. And until we actually have like documented evidence otherwise, I don't know why that assumption needs to be made. Like, Twinkie doesn't have to be in a video for Twinkie to be there in Wisconsin with her. I haven't vlogged anything. I haven't even vlogged, like, who knows? Maybe here down is actually missing, you know? It's so not. it's like, just because it's you not. don't show something in a video doesn't mean it's not that's happening. That's true. Like, that's the thing that's like so, uh, like that's probably one of the most frustrating frustrating things about is it? being a YouTuber, like easily top five, <laughs> is like if people don't see my animals or if they don't see me trying to work on my weight loss or well, if they don't see me, I don't know, donating to like charities, it means those things aren't happening. Well, I'm, I, well, are you working on your weight loss? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's not a thing you're doing. That's not the case. But then what's really crazy is like people can assume the worst though. Right. We all don't see me and my mom fighting with each other, but you guys are definitely assuming we are. So it's like, it'll always be like that. People will always assume the sure. worst. And that's that. Sure. Like that is literally the end of it. Sure. Next assumption is you don't want to lose weight anymore. I definitely do. Yes. I assume you're tired of YouTube and making videos. So this kind of goes into like what I was talking about in the beginning. Yes. Yeah, I feel like we've I feel like we've exhausted this conversation about you not posting videos on YouTube. Like we have exhausted it. What else is there left to say? Video. If you guys are even still here, wow. Um, YouTube for me, I love pretty much everything about it. I love thinking of video ideas. I love vlogging. I love talking. I love sharing with you guys. I love thinking about video ideas. That's why I give you the same five types of videos, rinse, lather, repeat. I love talking to you guys. I love, I've made friends with you guys. I see you guys in public. Yeah. You guys are sweet. Sure. You guys are amazing. Of like, course. This is oh, I did, I did see somebody, uh, Sarah. She was working at a, a coffee shop that I went to and made me a delightful caramel latte. Um, iced, iced caramel latte. And when I went to pick it up, she was like, oh my God, you have a YouTube channel. Uh, so hi, Sarah. Nice to meet you. The coffee was great. Thanks for uh, being so nice and lovely and friendly. And one of her coworkers brought around like a fancy French baguette. Uh, they, they get, I guess it was like the end of the day. And so they just like couldn't sell all of their bread. So they gave us some free bread. It was lovely. Thanks for, thanks for saying hi, Sarah. Good to meet you. Um, this puts a roof over my head and I'm so grateful, like beyond grateful for you guys. And it has changed my life for the better. But there's a big butt. There Ooh, is a heavy There is a big butt. There is a big butt. E side of YouTube. Look at this tail. Come on, tail. Look at this beautiful tail. Look at this beautiful there tail. There is a heavy side of YouTube. <gasps> the heavy side layer? The heavy side lair, y'all love Cats the Musical like I do. Were we going to the heavy side lair? That I don't want to be a part of. That's the side that I don't like. That's the side that I don't enjoy. That's the side that makes me, <sighs> it, it, it makes me depressed. All right. It makes me sad. I Get feel a job like challenge .com. I've been abused so much online that I just don't even get a job challenge.com then I don't know I don't know what else to say about it at this point like I don't do what you do what you want to do what, what else is there to say you've already said all of this I'm gonna start looking on my phone I don't even recognize who I am as a youtuber anymore because it, because it has completely shaped the way that I I am it has shaped me completely I feel like I can't be fun. I can't be bubbly on here. <laughs> I can't share super happy and exciting. You can do whatever you want. Anymore. Like I, ca I can't do that because I feel who's, like I can't show that you? side of me because it's like in the back of my brain, I'm constantly thinking about the bad parts. Of Honestly, go to therapy.com girl. Like, <laughs> like that's, that's the other part of this. Like I don't know. There's a lot of things that sometimes people struggle with, like, in terms of doing their jobs, like, YouTube aside. And, like, therapy would help. Go to therapy. Talk to them about this in therapy. I don't know, girl. Like, I, I sometimes talk about YouTube and therapy. YouTube can be stressful. YouTube can be frustrating. I, talk about it there. I don't know. I don't know. Either get a different job or go to therapy. Or both. Or both. Of YouTube instead of just the good. I will I will say, I will say though, because I have said this before, like I have frequently also said like log off and I do appreciate that she did that. The the specific context for my response right now is just that this is like the third, fourth time at this point that we've discussed why she took a break from the internet. And I just like have like what else do you want to say about this? We get it. I got it. Crystal clear heard you, we're good. I have thought of the good for so long and for so many years. And it's like now getting to the point where it's like the bad is outweighing the good big time. Okay. And I'm trying to figure out in private and in alone, what do I do to fix that? Go to what do I need to do? And I can't figure it out because I'm only in control of myself. True. I'm not in control of everyone else. True. So no matter what I say and no matter what I, what I do, 
there are thousands of people watching me that only view me as one thing, a villain, that only view me in one way, a narcissist, who only view this channel in one way, a drama way. Yeah, but you, I, but you also literally in the same video just got done talking about how you know that there's so many people who love and support you. So like, make your videos for them. Make, make your videos for them and fuck what the haters say, you know? Like, I, I get that that's, like, easier said than done. Like, I certainly, too, have been impacted by, like, something nasty that people have said to me at different parts of my YouTube journey and career. Like, I get it. And also, like, why are you letting them get in the way of your happiness? I'm not a drama channel. I am a human. I am a actual human with feelings. Sure. I go through things privately. Sure. And I also share some things publicly. Sure. Okay, guys. So I know for a fact in editing, I probably just edited out the last five minutes. I started literally rambling. So we're going to take a step back. Let's what I'm do trying it. to say is like, I enjoy the good parts of YouTube then do just those. as anyone should. Like, anyone should enjoy and love the good parts of life. Uh huh. But if there's something or someone that is just like every day beating at you and belittling you and questioning and speculating and bullying and rumors and just like mean things like whether it's nicknames or talking about your body or the way that you are the way that you talk your mental illness or this and that like every day you're not gonna want that in your life anymore okay then and then, I know quit. Like people can then quit youtube i don't i don't what else i got it you're like okay quit <laughs> and quit I think Hungry Fat Chick and I, we kind of understand each other. Her job is also YouTube, but she does mukbangs. So she decided to quit the mukbangs and move on to weight loss. And she was doing so good with her weight loss, but she was losing views. I don't, I don't, I don't understand how this is. I don't know why we're bringing Candy into this, which by the way, Candy is a very sweet person. I've talked to her privately. And I do, I do think it's really frustrating that, like, she really was not making the same amount of money when she was making weight loss content, and so she went back to doing mukbangs. It makes me very sad for her. Uh, I don't, I don't think this is, I don't think this is the same situation. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think that these two things are similar. I, I don't know. Maybe she'll help me understand better. Which means she was losing money. And she was very vocal about that. So she had to go back to the mukbangs. And that's not what she wanted to do. You could tell. Like, she felt defeated. And there comes a time where anyone can choose a job. They uh -huh. do it. And that's what they're relying on. Like, they have to go to work. In the same uh -huh. way that Hungry Fat Chick had to continue making those mukbangs. Well, well, also, to be fair, like, Candy is an adult human who could do other things. Like, n nobody put a gun to her head and said she had to do that. She just knows that that's the way that she can continue supporting the lifestyle that she currently has. Like, nobody's saying, Amberlynn, that you can't go get a job.com. Like, like, please be serious. Like, I don't understand. If you don't want to make videos, then don't make them. Go, go get a job. Go get a job. Like, I... I say that not, like, facetiously. It's just, like, you're acting like the only option you have is to make YouTube videos that you hate doing or nothing else. Like, you're acting like this is the only option you have in front of you. You're acting like Candy's only option was to do weight loss content or mukbangs. The reality is, is for both of you, you have other options. You do. Like, Go, go go, find employment. To make a buck, to be able to pay for the roof over her head and to take care of herself, I also have to do the same. Like, I need to continue making YouTube videos. Uh -huh. I don't want to give up. I don't want to walk away. Okay, like, then YouTube don't. YouTube has been a constant Put for up or shut up then. years. But sometimes I need a break. And sometimes that break is long. And people start questioning, well, that means you don't care about us. That's not true. That means I just care about myself too. I also get the assumption of like, what are you going to do? You have no money. How are you making money? I pay my bills. I pay my, I pay my bills. My bills are paid. Only up to me, but just know that I am very responsible. If I have a bill, that is paid on time. Sometimes even earlier. You guys don't have to worry about Budgeting that. Budgeting queen. Like, when I need a break from YouTube, 
that really means that I need a break from you too. Okay, then take because it. Because I love then take it. Video. We have, this is the third, fourth, fifth, sixth time we've talked about it. I got it. I understand. Please do take your breaks. Please. Why are we still talking about this? Maybe I am a narcissist. Maybe I do love to hear myself talk. Regardless, I love doing it. And I love being there for so many of you. So when I'm not around, just know that there's a reason. And the reason nine times out of 10, YouTube is affecting my mental health. I don't like to admit it out loud because I take pride. I take pride in my channel. I know a lot of people probably don't realize that, but I do. I, I have over 200,000 subscribers. Like, I can't believe it. I am able to live. I, I, <sighs> never mind, never mind. I have nothing else to say. Just let's wrap it up. Because of this channel. And to me, that is awesome. Like, regardless of how it happened, it happened. And I know there's so many people rooting for me right now. Like, it makes me emotional. Then do and it I for them. It. Do it for those people. But there's a heavy side. The old heavy the side layer. Okay. All right. Okay. Who's going to get to the heavy side layer? Spoiler alert. It's Grizabella. This channel that gets to me. A lot of people are like, Tommy's making her unhappy. No. <laughs> She's doing the opposite. She's making me happy. It's YouTube that's making me unhappy. So I'm needing to figure it out. Sorry, I'm gonna stop rambling about that. I hope that lands in the right people's hearts. I also am just like, at this point though, how is how is YouTube still making you unhappy? Cause you barely posted. You barely posted over the past like month, month and a half. And when you have posted, all you're doing is continuing to address all the things that make you unhappy. So how is anything getting better? Um, I know that not everyone listening to me right now cares about me. They like to act like they do, but they don't. All right, we need to do a hard stop on that conversation. Yeah, hard I really stop, feel like please. That could be a whole separate video. It, um, it could be a whole separate video because you already made it. You've already made that video. But it also brings me to my next assumption where it was you're still really depressed. No, I'm finally getting out of it. Okay, so yeah, great. You have had COVID before. I have not. Uh, well, knock on some wood, please. You haven't that you know about, probably. So the next one is you have to sit in two chairs. So this one's funny because it's, again, another rumor because you guys saw me sitting here and then you saw this chair. I'm sitting at a dining room table. So I was like sitting like this, I think. And you guys were like, she's sitting on two chairs. Literally, no, I'm not gonna move at all. Show you guys. This is just a separate chair. It just happens to be sitting right I next. I just can't deal with all the negativity, but let me like address the most asinine rumors about myself, including that I have to sit on two chairs. I don't like when you comment on my body, but let me bring attention to these rumors that I'm so big I have to sit on two separate chairs. Like, make it fucking make sense. Like, truly. Next to me? See, I'm on one chair. I'm currently sitting on a blanket because these chairs are hard on my booty. I need to get a cushion or something. Oh, Literally, God. no. It's just because it's a dining room table, so there's two chairs. Well, there Anyways, you go. This video is long enough. Literally, it's almost 40 minutes, so I'm gonna have to edit out like a lot. Uh, so I mine is an hour and eight minutes so far. Back. All right. Well, that was that video. <laughs> this is you all really are gonna get the extended cut today, cause. Damn, we are at an hour and eight minutes uh, without me editing anything out. I'm sure I'm not going to edit too much out, but it might be a little bit shorter than that once it gets to YouTube. But let's get into the Tommy Rumors video, and then hopefully we can be done. Hopefully this is a short and sweet. Actually, wait, let me change the battery on my camera, and then we'll get to get to. All right, so this video is called Tommy's Rumor, or Tommy's Rumor, Tommy Rumors. Let's get to, let's get to. Hello, hello. Hi. To video. So this is not clickbait. Yes, I will be talking about the things that are being said about Tommy. Let's go. So I actually already have a couple videos, really exciting videos and happy videos filmed. I don't have Work. them edited yet or anything like that. Of course but I not. I do have them up. Excited, excited to hear we have some pre-recorded content on its way. I can't fucking wait. We are so fucking back. That was what was going to be going up next, but since... This has happened. Um, I feel compelled. Like, uh, there are a lot of times where rumors are happening uh -huh. and things are being said where I just. I'm sick of rumors happening. I'm sick of being followed. Do y'all love the hit Lindsay Lohan song, Rumors? 
<laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, so again, uh, just as a uh, some context, a reminder, I'm pretty sure this is her responding to the stuff that came out of Jordy's live streams, which again, like, I feel like she's stupidly going to probably confirm some of these things about about the story, which is just her not thinking this through, really, truly. Keep my mouth shut. Maybe I'll, like, mention it, like, on the low, maybe, like, on Instagram or just in passing. But, like, this video is, like, strictly dedicated. I even wrote something. Oh. Because I wanted okay. to be, like, writer your mind. And as you guys know, I love to write. I love to journal. I'm I able love to write to my write. thoughts so much better in writing versus, like, speaking out loud. You guys sure. know me. Like, your girl can't speak half the time. Sure. And I'm not going to lie. I have a lot of anxiety right now filming this video. And when I am anxious, my brain does not work correctly. Like, words do not come out correctly. I just feel very, like, a lot. Okay. It just feels like a lot right now. So well, I decided to write. Well, let's get to it. Let Just tell me what you wrote. Let, let's, let's go. Like, in journal form... The way that I would write in my journal, and I am going to read it to you guys. Please, let's it's go. Help me because I do feel very anxious, and I do want to like have collective thoughts. I don't want to forget anything. Sure. And this is very important to me that I get this out. This this is what she means when she likes to plan and think of ideas for a video. <laughs> she planned out what she's gonna say. Could you imagine if she took that kind of care and and most of her content where she like wrote out her thoughts beforehand before she just like talked in this moment so before i read it i just want to explain like in short form this is about a reaction channel jordy who was contacted by tommy's ex-girlfriend's ex-wife and this tommy's ex-girlfriend's ex-wife uh, which by the way i think jordy reached out to this person and not the other way around this woman was immediately put on a pedestal and everything that she said was believed. People have taken I, everything that she said as gospel. I don't I think there were a lot of people that did, but I saw actually quite a bit of like speculation that potentially like we shouldn't just take everything as gospel. I was actually kind of surprised because typically I feel like alone on an island when it comes to being like skeptical about things like that. But I felt like I actually saw from like my brief overview on Twitter and from people in my Twitch uh, community and even in like Salty Crabs video, like everybody is like, we probably need to like take some kind of like caution before just believing everything because Jordy didn't provide a lot of like upfront receipts about anything and that's this is where Amber Lynn is gonna get herself in trouble because there actually I think were a number of people who were skeptical and now she's saying like well like based on what she just said it sounds like she's saying like we he did in fact talk to this person who is an actual person and y'all shouldn't just believe everything they said but also what you're doing there is confirming that this person that Jordy was talking to was actually who they said they were. Like, just kind of crazy. And as truth, because a lot of you want someone to hate, and it's easy for you guys to hate Tommy for whatever reason. Well, I, I think people are genuinely concerned about Tommy Salami being a feeder. And there's plenty of, outside of even this story, documented evidence of Tommy engaging in that behavior, but... Go off, queen. If you don't have a problem with it, who am I to deny you anything? You guys don't know her <laughs> in person like I do. And I'm telling you, she is lovable and likable. And I am happy and in love with her. And I know a lot of people want to, like, twist this, like, I'm, I'm really sure you dark are. narrative. But I'm telling you, it's not real. So I'm sorry I could have... This really dark narrative, girl, I've seen the picture of Tommy's late girlfriend with her stomach on top of Tommy. The, the, what, what narrative is there to twist about that? Be, like, a little more put together, and I'm sorry that I'm bad with my words, the fact that I have to literally look like this and read to you guys. Just do but it, girl. But what is gonna work best for me, which I have done this before, and it's usually only during, like, super, like, anxiety inducing situations for me girl, I and i do it in my I real life as well i don't well. care girl there just get it get to it a multitude of times in my life where instead of like 
Yes, you, you have anxiety and you are coping with your anxiety the way that lots of people cope with their anxiety. I'm glad to hear that. Also go to therapy and also get to it. Speaking to someone, I will write something and then I'll read it off to them. Uh -huh. It's helpful. It's therapeutic. I learned it years and years ago, actually in therapy, probably like when I was like 17 uh, or something. Sure. And ever yeah. since then, it has greatly helped me. Great. But I am sorry that I will be facing this for it's, the whole it's time. It's almost as if therapy works. Maybe you should try it again. But um, yeah, please hear me. Like, please hear me. I know there's a difference between like listening to someone and that's that. Go I, to one ear I, I, I want I want to hear you. I want to listen to you, but you've been yapping. Get to it. And you build your assumptions and you don't really care. But like, I need you guys to hear what I am saying. Uh -huh. Please. I truly hate that I have to do this. I want my channel to reflect what's real in my life and not constantly having to make videos like this. Defending Tommy's character because of a reaction channel who is so hungry for views and money and hot tea that they have created a whole false storyline that has thousands and thousands of people believing it. It's un- I, I just love, I, what I will say is I always love that, you know, any any time that a reaction channel has something to say about her in any kind of way, her immediate thing is to write it all off because they're just hungry for views and, and money and things like that. And like, I do think that like there's a chance that maybe Jordy wouldn't have even reached out to this person had he had like other content to make about Amberlynn, right? Like I do think he was like, mm, we got to find something to talk about. Uh, but also there's some level of this that feels like it's the truth to the extent that you have to come on here and you feel like you need to defend it. So it's like also seems to be true. Also, like, maybe there's a reason that Jordy needed to make this content. Maybe we're all better for knowing that and you're just too blinded by, like, your alleged love for Tommy that you're unwilling to look at some of this stuff, that this pattern of behavior from her. Unfair to me, and it's unfair to Tommy. This is not the first time this reaction channel has done this. They have platformed a few people as long as they were willing to spill tea and share whatever could cause me or other people in my life to look bad for their benefit. Well, their well, also, well, also, just to be clear, the stuff about Erica and Brittany, because if y'all don't recall, like Erica and Brittany, Erica being the uh, Valentine, one of Amberlynn's ex-girlfriends, who she was participating in an affair with knowingly. Erica and Brittany did an interview on Jordy's channel, and that stuff was true. Like, most of it, you agreed, happened. You. So what do you mean? What what do you mean he'll platform anything? Girl, what? Like, that was true. It's not like he's out here, like, that was an example of him just, like, platforming lies. Like, that stuff was co corroborated by you. There have been some serious misrepresentations made in a recent video on that reaction channel about an extremely painful chapter in Tommy's life. <laughs> the video, which talks about... A it's also crazy. I mean, this is also where I go back to thinking about, like, her continuing to say this reaction channel, this reaction channel, a certain reaction channel. It's just like part of part of this is like, why are you going to make a video and not like fully like address it? Like imagine you're one of Amberlynn's supporters and you don't watch reaction channels because you like Amberlynn and you think that there's an issue with reaction channels and you're not seeking out drama about it. But then you come on, like Amber Lynn comes on here and is just randomly talking about this thing and you have no idea what the fuck she's talking about because you don't watch Oh Lordy, It's Jordy. Like, it's just wild that she wants to come on here and talk about it, but then be like, I can't give him any attention. Domestic violence situation involving Tommy and her ex fails to include important facts. So it paints a false and fails harmful narrative. And fails to include important facts, meaning there were aspects of this story that are true, and I'm upset that Tommy's side of the story wasn't shared, which is just all you're doing right now, Amberlynn, is confirming that this person was who they said they were. I want to be very clear. Tommy is the victim here, not the one at fault. The details in the video were based on inaccurate and incomplete information from a third party with a clear agenda. Someone who has openly stated that their goal was to get revenge for their own personal region, reasons, reasons. Well, that that is true. And that is something that that Jordy included in in his live stream that he like read that out and in, in the in the, the messages that he sent back and forth with this person. So 
I don't know what you think is what what you think he's misrepresenting because he shared he shared all of like that person was very up up upcoming up upright forthcoming one of those words was very forthcoming with that uh information as well like i don't i what part do you think is missing so far and even admitted that they've tried to get revenge in the past yeah this kind of victim shaming is not only misleading it's downright disgusting it wasn't a simple incident in a garage as you can see from the charges listed about tommy's ex there was a weapon involved a weapon please that's that's also interesting because i think i could be wrong about this i could be wrong about this but i think they said that the weapon charges or whatever were dropped against uh tommy's ex and that it was just the false imprisonment thing i i think like a larger part of the story is that was one incident that came up like that was the incident where there was like police involvement but I think what the ex-wife was trying to say is that Tommy was treating her ex inappropriately prior to that incident. So, like, not not to say that, like, Tommy's ex should have, like, trapped her in a garage or anything like that, but just saying that it's more complex and more nuanced than, than just that incident, which I think is also what Amber Lynn is trying to say. Please just think about that for a minute. With multiple ways to escape a garage... Tommy couldn't. Think about why. The truth is that her abuser was charged with felony charges for their actions, and Tommy has spent years working on healing and working through trauma her ex caused. A lot of people are saying that Tommy must have provoked her into holding her hostage with a weapon for hours. If that were true, Tommy's ex would not have been convicted. Provoking someone or self-defense, it would not have gotten her ex convicted for the millionth time period. It's incredibly hurtful to see the narrative twisted in this way, and I feel compelled to speak out because no Uh one should ever be made to feel like they are the perpetrator when they are the victim. Domestic violence is a serious issue, and we should be lifting up those who have suffered, not blaming them. I stand by Tommy because I know the full story, and I've known the full story. Yeah, maybe I didn't. I, I, of everything, I watched the part about the garage situation probably the least in depth. Like, I I covered that the least. So I guess I also assumed that Amberlynn was going to come on here and talk about the, the feeder stuff, the feeder parts of it all. So I don't know. That's interesting. I, I do think, I, like, what I will give Amberlynn is, like, none of us, none of us were present for any of this. I, I frequently don't like talking about any kind of, like, domestic violence, sexual assault, anything like that. Uh, because frequently, especially when we're talking about things that, like, none of this happened on YouTube. Like, all of this happened before Tommy ever came into Amberlynn's life. So, like, none of us were present for it. There probably is lots and lots and lots of nuance to this and, like, lots of aspects of this that are, like, simply put, like, none of us on the internet will ever know about. Like, the people who know the most about what happened in that situation are Tommy and her ex, right? But I thought, I was anticipating Amberlynn was going to come on here and talk about Tommy being a feeder. I thought, well, I don't know why I thought that. I'd be thinking about it. I guess, I guess Amberlynn has always just kind of written all of that off anyways. So, here we are. A whole time. These people have decided to leave out. And I quote, I don't want to go into details. That is what this person said when talking about Tommy being falsely imprisoned by her ex. Why? Why? Because it would leave people empathizing with Tommy. Instead, this person has exaggerated, lied, left out important information, and continues to create outrage against Tommy because they want revenge. I I think, I think, okay, so like, here's the thing. I think Amber Lynn thought she was going to come on here and just like, completely discredit everything that this person had to say about Tommy. And instead, honestly, truly, what I think she's done in all of this is just, like, brought more attention to the things that this person had to say about Tommy, honestly. Because I really, I like, I'm telling you, I was surprised when I was, like, looking through stuff about Jordy's messages and things like that. I was surprised, actually, at how many people were skeptical of it and how many people... There certainly were people running with it and being like, Tommy's awful, Tommy's the worst, blah, 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 blah. But I was surprised at the number of people that didn't automatically just buy into it. And I think all this has really done is confirm that 
Jordy was talking to a person who actually knows Tommy and is speaking from their own experience, whether that is biased, whether that person is leaving details out or not. Like, what this video right here is confirming to people is that that person is actually who they said they were. And I, wow. Like, I, I don't think that this is unfortunately going to do what Amberlynn thinks it's going to do. Uh, I am inclined to agree with her that there's probably way more information that that person didn't share up front, but I think it's probably going to just lead to, like, people people believing everything that that person said. This is the only way they know how to do it, and I want to make something very clear, that the abuse that Tommy endured is real, and she deserves justice and support, not ridicule and not doubt. She definitely does not deserve a reaction channel making a spectacle over something that Tommy has spent years trying to heal from. Having this come to light, speculated about, and joked about has left a bad taste in my mouth, and I'll tell you that for sure. I have okay. been distant from YouTube already due to the harsh things that have been said and have been lied about. Okay. Certain reaction channels have only gotten worse as the time goes on. My channel has Name been born. names. It went through a law, so they've been starving. Because of that, huh, they've lost their minds, and they're actively painting a narrative about Tommy that isn't real. Bringing in anonymous I, strangers to the storyline and... I... I... Well, here's the thing, though. You're confirming that this person was real. Like... Is, is Jordy the one that's painting a false narrative? Or is Jordy just talking to somebody that actually knows Tommy and is hearing what their story is? Like, I'm not saying it's something I would do. Like, for me personally, I'm not out here seeking out, like, like third, fourth characters, like, side characters, like, fourth removed. I don't know what I'm trying to say, you know? I've been filming for, like, over an hour and a half now at this point or something like that. But you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not something I would do. But it doesn't sound like Jordy's talking to somebody who is a stranger to Tommy. It sounds like this person really does know Tommy. So, like, what what false narrative is Jordy presenting outside of just sharing this person's story? Like, Jordy's DMs were very upfront, like... Jordy shared everything this person said. A lot of people said, like, you know, there's probably more to the story. I don't understand what your issue with Jordy is in this situation. Maybe you should also be talking a little bit to your your girlfriend about her history with feederism. Believing every word that is being said, all while using the word allegedly. So YouTube terms of service isn't broken by them, and so the law doesn't get evolved for actual slander and defamation. If you guys ever S sue them, sue them then. Sue Jordy. Go sue Oh Lordy, it's Jordy for just literally sharing this person's story with the internet. Like, <laughs> she loves to throw around slander and defamation. A if anything, you would be wanting to sue the person who said it, not Jordy for just sharing their story. I don't get it. I wanted to know what slander and defamation looks like. It has been months and months of what Tommy has been experiencing since certain reaction channels found out who she was. This has altered Tommy's what? life. And I now what is slander and defamation about talking about actual pictures that are online that you can see? Girl, that ain't slander and defamation. Those pictures exist. They are. They were found on feeder websites. You acknowledge that those pictures exist. You just wrote them off because Emily needed the money for for traveling to see her partner or whatever. I have witnessed it. It has also altered mine. Without revealing how, I'm pretty sure it's apparent. Imagine something like this happening to you. Thank you to those who have been supportive and continue to believe in the truth and don't follow the mm -hmm. crowd. I see you. And I'm sorry that the hate and the rumors are louder right now, but I still see you and I love you dearly. To those okay. spreading misinformation, I hope you take a moment to consider the impact your words have and the harm caused when the real victims are silenced or blamed. It's easy for reaction channels to say whatever they want because they know their words have impact and their audience believes whatever is said to them. This situation just proves it. Tommy was majorly abused, held hostage for hours in a garage with a weapon. And I don't feel comfortable saying what the weapon was, but use your brain for this one, please. And she was finally able to escape, and her ex went to prison for it, and now has a felony. But somehow this reaction channel was able to manipulate their audience 
into believing that Tommy is the abuser. This is why victims do not share their story. And the sad thing is, Tommy didn't share hers. Someone else did. And it wasn't even the right story. It's unfair, it's twisted, and it's morally wrong. This isn't a game. This isn't for money. This isn't for views. This is Tommy's real life that is being ruined and her mental health is being destroyed. The victim blaming all because people want drama and someone to hate is the grossest thing I've ever seen happen on Girl World. And thank you, Jordy, for reminding oh, me- Oh, now, now we're saying Jordy's name. Now, now we're saying Jordy's name. Why I hate this community and why I do not belong here anymore. This should have never happened. I should not have had to do this. Tommy should not have had her personal domestic violence abuse story used for views and money on a reaction channel. That's not a reaction. That is downright hatred. And people wonder why I don't want to upload. People wonder why and where I am. Okay, then don't upload. Then don't, I don't know. Don't upload, don't put your girlfriend on the internet. Don't, like don't, I don't, I don't know what else to tell her at this point. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what else to say. Why do I seem so sad every time I come on camera? This, this is why. Because before it was, Amber, that's so fat. She needs to lose weight. Step on the scale, step on the scale. But now things are serious. Reaction channels have morphed into something that is despicable. While I'm trying to improve my life and myself as a person and work on my BPD, reaction Hold up. Oh, hold up. In what ways are you working on your BPD? Le leave Miss BPD out of this. She, she, she is not being worked on right now. Leave her out of this, please. Channels have gotten worse. They're morphing into monsters. I'm not saying all of them because that's not the case. That's not. But there are a few. <laughs> I should not be kicked off of a platform. You're not. I have been on. Nobody is kicking you off a platform, girl. Who is kicking you off of a platform? Who kicked you off of it? Please be fucking serious. For 11 years, because I'm this harassed, there is a difference between online hate versus straight up harassment that is destroying mine and my girlfriend's mental health and life. It's not okay. And I don't know what else to say about it. Every time I express myself, I am met with invalidation and I'm gaslighted into feeling this small. I am gaslighted into believing that I deserve this or that Tommy deserves this when we don't. So many of you scream, Tommy isn't good for you, Tommy's gonna hurt you. But it's being screamed by the people who are actively every single day hurting me. I, listen, I don't, if you wanna be in a relationship with Tommy Salami, be in a relationship with Tommy Salami. Like, no skin off my back, but I, it is crazy to sit here and act like she doesn't have a history of participating in feederism. But listen, do do what you want, girl. Get get your get your whatever. Do it. I, I don't care. You don't care. You don't care about me. You don't care about my well-being. You get high off of the drama that my life brings to your channel so you get views. And for the people watching and engaging in this sort of behavior, you're just as awful. This is a girl that is hurt. This is a girl that has been beaten and beaten and beaten. And it's like, it only just keeps getting worse. And I personally don't know how much more I can take. I truly don't. This sort of behavior should not be allowed on YouTube. And I- I-, I I'm, Listen, again, I also like opted not to, to watch everything with like, Jordy's commentary. So perhaps he added more commentary and stuff to the the DMs and things that like maybe I missed. Maybe there was more speculation. I mean, like I have watched in the past whenever it's been relevant some of Jordy's content and like he is somebody who likes to do a little bit of speculation and speculating. That was redundant. But overall, like what was shared in those DMs was just that person's story. And I don't understand why sharing that person's story is inherently awful. I mean, like, 
if it's wrong, like you're you're able to come on here and say it's wrong. Tommy's able to come on the internet and say it's wrong. Like you're more than welcome to do that. And like if you have an issue with what they're saying, like take it up with that person. You know. I only hope that one day my voice is heard. If you are currently suffering with domestic violence, there is a national domestic violence hotline that you can call. You are not alone. The number is 800-799-7233, or you can text BEGIN to 88788. Do not let stories like these, like victim shaming or victim blaming, scare you into not getting help because there are people who are there for you. Use your voice. You are loved and not alone. I, I have to be honest. I was, that is not, that was not what I was anticipating from, from that video in particular. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I like focus on the wrong part of the, the stuff that Jordy was sharing. But I was not anticipating all of that. I was expecting that to go just like a very different way. Honestly, truly. So that is all very surprising to me. I don't know. I, I do want to say like, especially because I don't know, like that was the part of what Jordy shared that I watched the least of in terms of like trying to get caught up on stuff. So like, I certainly think, again, I don't like to talk about those situations. I have I have always stated that when it's come to other topics on my channel, when it's come to like Chantal and some of her relationships, even Amber Lynn and like her relationships that have involved that, like I have always tried to be, I don't know, very thoughtful about that because I do care. Like I know a lot of people on the internet who watch me, who watch Amber Lynn, have all been uh, impacted by things like that. And like, I certainly, you know, like do hope that y'all don't feel invalidated by any of this stuff. Like y'all and your mental health and well-being is more important than whatever drama is happening with Amber Lynn on the internet, whatever's happening with Jordy, et cetera. So like, please make sure to take care of yourself, please. Like that's obviously more important than all of that. I just, that was not what I was expecting. And I'm kind of shook that like, she basically seemingly confirmed that that person was at least who they said they were. Maybe not all of their story lines up with her understanding of the story. I mean, I think the other thing to remember is that Amber Lynn was also not there for this incident, right? So like, of course she's gonna believe everything that Tommy tells her and, and maybe rightfully so. I don't know. Anyways, that was not what I was expecting, which is why I didn't have a lot of stuff to say because I was just like kind of taken back by it all. I will say while I was editing this and like had more time to take in what I actually watched, I do think it's interesting that Amber Lynn is like talking so much about people who are victims of domestic violence and things like that, especially considering some of the things that we know have come from Destiny and Beck and allegations from her own friend, Alexis, about what she did to Feline. I don't know. It just seems a little also weird that that Amberlynn is on here also like making herself out to be a victim in this situation, which I guess I get to the extent that like Tommy's mental health is probably impacting her mental health because they're essentially living together. But it's just very weird knowing, you know, Amber Lynn's history with other people as well. It's it's all just a very weird situation. Like, I'm just, I don't know why she's addressing this on her platform. I have yapped a lot. So you are so lucky. For those of you that love these really long videos, here you are. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did please make sure to subscribe down below. Hit the bell button so you get a notification every single time I uh, post a new video. And leave me a comment, hit like, click share, and follow me on all my social media. I love you all so much, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!